Hi guys, this is Jordan with Motion Array. Judging from the setup that we have here, you may think that we're shooting in some sort of a big, professional, expensive studio, right? Well, the truth is, is that actually we're just shooting in my backyard. Normally when you shoot a subject on a cheap paper backdrop like this, you're very limited in terms of the way that you can actually capture them, usually with a medium to a close-up shot, which translates to only getting them from about the chest up. And if you really want to get a wide shot, you better be prepared to break the fourth wall and show your audience absolutely everything. But wait, if we're shooting in my backyard, then how do we go from this to this? Well, that's exactly what we're going to go over today, and it's all inside of After Effects. The only one thing you need to make sure of is that you don't cast any shadows onto your backdrop. And if you do, and if it's unavoidable, then you need to make sure that they're very soft. But with that out of the way, let's jump into After Effects and let's take a look at how to get this effect. All right, so we're inside of After Effects. Let's take our footage, let's put it into a new composition, and I'm just gonna deselect the audio track here so that it's not distracting. Now I'm just gonna make this composition a way more manageable size. And here's our footage. There's really nothing that special about it. But when we're done with it, it's gonna look like we're in a giant room. Now the very first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our pen tool and we're gonna draw a mask around our subject. You don't have to worry about getting this mask perfectly close to your subject. Give it a generous amount of space. We're way less concerned with getting a tight mask and way more concerned with making sure that any body part of our subject doesn't cross over the line. Once you're done, it should look like this. Now let's quickly play through and just make sure that no body part crosses over the line. And we can see that my hand here is a little bit too close for comfort, so we're just gonna stretch this out and we're gonna add a new keyframe here and bring it back. And that looks a lot better in my opinion. Now let's play it again and just make sure, yep, it's completely contained, great. Now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna duplicate this layer with Control or Command D. And then we're gonna go over to the name here, let's take the top layer and rename it to be our subject. And then let's take the bottom layer and then we're gonna call it background. Great, now with that done, we're gonna drop down this menu here and we're gonna go to our layer mask and we're just gonna delete it. Cool, so effectively now what we've achieved is we have a top layer that's for our subject and then we have a bottom layer that includes everything else and that fills in all the empty space. And that's our background. So for right now, I'm just gonna hide this top layer from being visible and we're just gonna work with the background. Take your background layer and let's duplicate it twice. So now what you should have is you should have background, background two, and background three. We wanna make sure to keep at least one of these layers completely unchanged. So we're gonna choose this one and we're just gonna hide it from being visible. And we're also gonna do the same for background three. Now we're just gonna work with background layer number two and let's start the actual process of extending our backdrop. Now the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go up and choose our rectangle tool. And with background layer number two selected, we're gonna draw a very simple rectangle as close to our subject as possible and then extending to the edge of the frame of the backdrop. And we're just gonna turn on the background layer to make sure that we can see what's going on in context. So right now what we've done is we've created a layer mask that includes as much of the backdrop as possible without including our subject. Then let's go down to the layer mask settings and we're just gonna add a feather. And I'm gonna choose a value of five. Next up, we're gonna go down to the transform options. And once you break that down, what we're gonna choose is we're gonna actually mess with the anchor point. Now you can see here that the anchor point is pretty far away from our actual mask. And now if we increase the scaling of our footage, which is what we wanna do next, you can see that it doesn't act really uniform. It, it kinda of floats around everywhere and it doesn't stay with the rest of the footage. This is not what we want and it gives you the really real impression that something's been changed in the footage. We don't want that at all. So how do we fix that? Basically we wanna get the anchor point right to the edge of that mask. But how do we do that? Let's take our anchor point and we'll manually move it right to that edge. But now our footage isn't where it should be. We want to get it back to where it was, but we need to get it exactly to the same place. And that seems like a difficult task, but it's actually easy. Just take the exact value of the horizontal part of the anchor point and then manually put in that same number for your position. And there you go, it's right back where it was. Now this next part is where the magic actually happens. Deactivate the uniform scaling, and now just take the horizontal scaling, and let's bring it all the way to the edge. And there we go, for about half of our frame, we actually have extended the entire backdrop so it goes all the way to the edge. And if we play our footage back, then we'll see that it actually really doesn't show any signs of being fake. And even if you zoom in to go closer, you can actually see these little microscopic uh, pieces of noise just showing that it's actual footage. And because there's nothing crossing in front of that part of the frame, there's nothing to indicate for us that it's been scaled up and that it's not really accurate to real life. And that's actually one of the reasons that we chose to do it this way. If we were to just take a solid color and try to match it, 
it would be a still frame basically, and there wouldn't be any indication that it's actually a moving piece of footage. To keep effects looking real, it's always a great idea to try to use pre-existing pieces of your footage to sell the effect. Now we're gonna close this down to keep organized and we're gonna do basically the exact same thing except on the other side of our subject. But the only thing is that we notice that the hand here is doing a little bit more movement. So let's go through then, scrub through our footage and see where the point is that it's farthest out away from the body. And then we'll make sure that we won't cut it off if we use a different piece of footage. So that looks like the farthest point. So we're gonna use that as a reference and then try to get as close as we can, uh, giving a little bit more space because when we feather it, we don't want it to like slide over top a, a little bit. Eh, it's kind of close. When we actually extend the footage, it's not gonna necessarily matter so much with the uh, edge of the seam of the paper roll. We're just gonna feather our mask again here and give it a value of five. And oops, I noticed that uh, my layer isn't visible. That's okay, it doesn't mess up any of the work that we've done. I'm just gonna make it visible so it actually shows when we start working with the footage. I'm just gonna solo it here and then I'm gonna zoom in and show you guys what the difference is between a feather and just having it completely unfeathered of a value of zero. So this is what it looks like with a feather of five and that's what it looks like with a feather of zero. Basically just to show how it's gonna help blend the footage together. It's not gonna show a really harsh visible line once all is said and done. Okay, let's uh, unsolo this and let's see it in context. Uh, the next thing that we're gonna do is we're going to go to our transform options here uh, and we're gonna do the exact same thing as before. Let's bring the anchor point all the way to the edge of our mask and we're actually gonna zoom in here. Let's try to get a really, a really tight, let's get it perfect here. Um, right about there, awesome, that's perfect. You actually don't have to get it exact, but the closer you get it, the less likely it'll be that there's uh, any sort of offset when you scale it up. So now let's match our position with our anchor point, and once we've done that, it's back in the same position. Great, uh, and now what we're gonna do is, uh, it's a little close to my hand there, I think it'll be all right. Okay, so now let's go down to scaling, let's uncheck uniform scaling, and then let's scale it up, and there it goes all the way to the edge of the frame. And guys, it's already looking pretty great, not gonna lie. This is actually looking like we're in a giant room. And we're just gonna quickly do a bit of a pass around the footage looking a little bit closer, just making sure that there's no visible seams or nothing that's breaking the illusion of the fact that we're actually not in a giant studio. And it's looking good. You can see over here that there's some stretched out stuff. That's gonna be gone later, uh, so don't worry about that for the time being. Now let's quickly dive down to the feet here. What you'll notice is that there's some shadows creeping out over the edge. Now, to be honest, this is actually good. What it does is this shows that this is actually like a real unit. This is not just like a solid color that's you know stretching out over the edge of the frame. One of the reasons that we actually use pre-existing footage and stretch it out is because you can actually sell the effect that you're in a physical room because you're casting shadows and you're actually interacting with the environment. And there's no reason that anybody would suspect that there's actually not a light source that's casting in that direction. And as long as your shadows aren't crazy crazy harsh, it actually won't really give away the fact that you're uh, stretching out the shadows at all. So this is really good. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna highlight all of our background layers and we're gonna pre-compose them. And uh, you can name it whatever you like, but I think I've gonna name mine all background H, H for horizontal, and great. Now let's duplicate this layer again. Uh, and now what we're gonna do is exactly what we did for the left and right side uh, and grab our rectangle tool, except we're gonna do it for the very top and get rid of that top part of the paper roll. Uh, now we're gonna have to stretch this part out a little bit more. My head was uh, close to the top of the frame there uh, where the paper actually kind of starts to look different and it's actually the roll instead of just a flat piece of paper. So let's make sure not to cut off my head here and let's raise it up a little bit. And the very top of the paper roll, if you stretch it far enough, as long as it exits the frame, it's not gonna matter too much. So I think we're good right here. Awesome, now the next piece is we're just gonna dive into the layer mask and we're gonna give it a feather of uh, five, the same as the others, and just make sure that it nicely integrates with the rest of the footage. Uh, and then we're gonna go to our transform options here and we're, instead of the horizontal uh, anchor point, we're gonna be worrying about the vertical anchor point. Let's, ooh, let's line it up right to the edge there and yeah, right about there is good. Uh, let's, get it, let's get it exact, let's be really, really thorough with this. And perfect, that looks great. Uh, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take that same value uh, on the Y coordinate and we're just gonna put it into our position and that's gonna bring it all the way back up to the top exactly where it was. Great, now you know the drill. Uncheck your uniform scaling and let's scale this up and get rid of the paper roll. And there we go. We've officially gone from looking like we're in a dark basement with a paper backdrop to looking like we're in a big studio. And we're just gonna play this and we're gonna dive in and look to see that there's nothing giving away the effect, no seams, no nothing. It looks great. And now that the legwork of the actual effect has been done, we can dive in and we can make some changes to polish it up a little bit. Specifically, we're gonna do some color correction. So let's highlight all of our layers here and let's pre-compose everything into just one main piece of footage. 
Great. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add the Lumetri Colors effect, and we're just going to do some minor color correction and make this look a little bit more snazzy. If you go up to your effects panel here and you type in Lumetri Color, it should come up pretty quickly. And then you just drag and drop it onto your footage, and on the left-hand side there, you should be able to work with this effect. So I'm just going to take this eyedropper here, and I'm going to change the white balance to make it look a little bit more natural. That's already looking way better. I want to make it a little brighter, increase the exposure here. That's already looking better. Now, I'm going to go down to curves. I love curves. And let's just uh, make some points here. And we're just going to take the midtones and highlights a little bit up here. And honestly, that's starting to look pretty good. And let's just take the exposure down a tiny bit here to compensate. And guys, that's our footage. If you've been following along and doing this with your own footage, then congratulations, you've probably got a really nice looking effect by now. If you just keep practicing this and uh, keep trying it over and over again, you'll get really fast at it, I guarantee it. But right now what I want you to do is take a look at our before and after so that we can take one last look at the process from start to finish. So this is where we started. Then we added a bit of a wall on the right hand side, then we stretched out the left hand side, and then finally we did the top and a bit of a color correction. And guys, that's the effect of how to extend your backdrop and make it look like you're in a giant studio. I hope you found this video helpful. If you guys did, feel free to check out our other After Effects tutorials here at MotionArray.com. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.